taking action for you. 7 Action News this morning starts right now. First at 6, preparing for more protests. Outrage over the governor's extended stay-at-home order. This is the most extreme government overreach I've seen in my lifetime. The warning from the attorney general and Michigan State Police for people who plan to bring a gun. Controversial ruling. Wisconsin stay-at-home order reversed. Crowds packing bars within hours of the decision. Why the state Supreme Court overturned the order. Expanding testing. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan with the big announcement. Anybody age 60 or older who's a resident of the city of Detroit can get a free test. What you need to do to take advantage of the free test and how to get a ride if you don't have one. Seeking help during the pandemic. I'm running down the addiction and recovery resources you have available to help you support your personal rebound. Good morning, early risers. Thank you for waking up with us. It is Thursday, May 14th, one more day, and we've wrapped up another week. I'm Alicia Smith. And I'm Keenan Smith, uh, but it is a busy Thursday. Uh, let's take a look uh, at 7 First Alert radar. We do have uh, rain just out to our west, about to move into Metro Detroit, with a chance for severe storms later today. And let's get right to 7 First Alert meteorologist Kevin Jeans about those chances. Is it going to be a bumpy ride today, Kev? Hey guys, good morning. We have rain this morning and that's not going to really be an issue. This afternoon, though, stronger storms are possible and we'll get some rounds of heavy rain. And it's really a question of if we can get a line of storms developing this afternoon. And that's a little bit difficult for the forecast models to handle. And so if it becomes a little more organized, then we get a high risk of damaging wind gusts this afternoon and this evening. But this morning, nothing like that. But we could have a few pockets with heavy rain. And I haven't seen any lightning, but there may be a couple of lightning strikes here or there, a few thunderstorms mainly south of I-94 through this morning. It's a warm morning. Right now it's 48 in Detroit. It's about 15 degrees, at least warmer than it was yesterday morning. So as the day goes on, showers this morning, a few pockets of heavy rain, more likely to get thunderstorms by midday through the afternoon. And then later today from about 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., there may be some uh, stronger wind gusts too. So risk of severe weather this afternoon and this evening, just some showers this morning with highs around 70 degrees. So just be sure you're weather aware and paying attention and then charge all your phones and devices too in case we do have some power outages later today. Allie? Keeping an eye on this crash. It happened about 30 minutes ago or so, and we are starting to see a little bit of clear up here in this area on I-94 westbound just after M-59 is where the actual crash happened. So you can see this shaded in red, 17 miles per hour before where the crash happened. After, once you make it through, oh, it was in yellow and it just turned to green. So we're starting to see things kind of pick up here. And if we take a look at one of our MDOT cameras, you can actually see where some of the lanes have, oh, it it looks like it literally just cleared. Guys, this is all real-time news here. <laughs> so the crash is cleared. Things are looking good. Take back everything that I just said, Alicia. <laughs> That's okay. This is live, live TV. Thank you for that update, Allie. 6.02 is the time now. Another round of protests is scheduled today in Lansing over Governor Whitmer's stay-at-home order. The governor's warning that the more people who show up risking the spread of the virus, the more likely the order will need to be extended. Now, uh, the governor said Wednesday that her stay-at-home order pre prevented nearly 3,500 additional coronavirus deaths in Michigan. We'll have more on the planned protest, though, in just a moment. On Wednesday, Governor Whitmer announced the temporary layoffs of 31,000 state employees. Two-thirds of the state's workers will be furloughed because of a budget shortfall due to the pandemic. Employees will be taking two temporary layoff days each pay period through late July. The move is expected to Save the state $80 million. Wisconsin's stay at home order has been reversed by that state's Supreme Court. Last night, bars were packed just hours after the decision. Justices overturned the order by a vote of four to three, calling it unlawful and unenforceable. The emergency order was first issued back in March by Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and then extended until May 26. Evers said the decision could put people at risk. Now let's get back to the protest in Lansing. Today's demonstration coming just two weeks after Michigan made national headlines when armed protesters gathered inside the state capitol building. 7 Action News reporter Jen Schantz is live for us this morning with a message from the uh, organizers of that event, but also Michigan State Police. Jen? 
Yeah, Keenan, we do have some rain headed our way this morning. Unclear how that's going to affect the turnout in Lansing today. Unlike two weeks ago, the legislature is not in session, so protesters, armed or not, will not have access to inside the Capitol. We heard from one of the event's organizers. He said he's going to be wearing a mask. He'll be following the rules, but he wants to make sure his voice is heard. This is the most extreme government overreach I've seen in my lifetime. Adam D'Angeli will join other protesters today in Lansing over Governor Whitmer's stay-at-home order in place until May 28th. The rally is organized by a group called Michigan United for Liberty. According to its website, nearly 800 people are planning to attend. I don't particularly want to see people congregating, period. We know that that contributes to spread, but if, if people are going to come down and demonstrate, do it in a responsible way. Michigan State Police reminding protesters that while Michigan is an open carry state, those seen brandishing a gun will face consequences. You can't stand there with your, your finger above it. Indexing is what we call it in law enforcement. Uh, we're going to take action against that. A planned protest two weeks ago with armed protesters inside the Capitol building prompted the Capitol Commission to look into the issue of firearms within the Capitol. Attorney General Dana Nessel says the commission has the authority to ban guns from the Capitol. A vote on the matter has been delayed as a committee further studies it. D'Angeli says he'll be following the rules while speaking out. Political dissent has been the bedrock of our society for for generations. Never in American history has the government ordered everybody to stay in their homes. All right, uh, now Jen, uh, we heard uh, Lieutenant Shaw there talking about folks brandishing their guns. If they do break the law, maybe indexing, what sort of consequences could those uh, protesters face? Well, Keenan, brandishing a gun is considered a misdemeanor. Michigan State Police taking to Twitter yesterday saying those who are holding their gun in an intimidating way, uh, intentionally trying to incite fear, could potentially be arrested on site. Again, that rally starting this morning at 9 o'clock. We'll have a crew in Lansing later on this morning. Reporting live, Jen Chance, 7 Action News. All right, thank you, Jen. And of course, we'll provide updates throughout the day at WXYZ.com. Today, coronavirus testing is expanding in the city of Detroit. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan says any city worker who tests positive can now get their family tested at the state fairgrounds drive through site. The mayor says 260 city workers have been tested since Monday and three of them are positive with COVID-19. He also says any Detroiter aged 60 or older can now be tested for free at the fairgrounds. Testing is only open to Detroiters and an appointment is required. The number to call is 313-230-0505. Now, if you don't have a ride to the fairgrounds, you can get one by calling that number. Well, a top government scientist is providing a grim warning this morning ahead of testifying before lawmakers. 